going to move on to the next section of drug nomenclature. Here again, we can learn just what some drug classes are, and when available, we'll learn the beginning or the end, the prefix or the suffix, to learn what the drug class is as a little kind of helpful reminder during your exam. We'll start out with benzodiazepines. These usually end in PAM or LAM, P-A-M or L-A-M, and that'll tell us these are benzodiazepines. Now, one thing about these medications is they are addictive, they are abused, um, they have a high street value, and because of that, you'll see uh, quite a bit of issues going on with them. People had 30-day supplies of it 10 days ago and need more. People bringing in multiple doctor's prescriptions to you for the medication. Be very careful for these type of medications because there's always seems to be some kind of shady type of thing going on with them. So be careful. Make sure none of your workers, your co-workers are taking them. Always uh, stay away from any kind of temptation to be able to pull them away from the pharmacy you're at. So they end in PAM or LAM. They are controlled substances. We'll learn the schedule class later, but it's schedule 3, 4, and 5. And we'll make more sense of that later. But some three examples might be diazepam, alprazolam, or lorazepam, uh, Valium, Xanax, or Ativan as the three brand names for each of those respectively. And you can see that right here on the slide. So again, PAM or LAM ends in that. You'll know it's a benzodiazepine. Let's discuss cholesterol medications. Cholesterol medications can end in a couple of different endings, but statin is the one I want you to refer to here. It's on the left side. Uh, statin is simvastatin, atorvastatin, or pravastatin. Now, statin's a nice shortened word for a, a, a drug class known as HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. Whew, that is a long mouthful, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. You'll want to just say statin because it's just easier and you sound like a real nerd whenever you say uh, uh, that big long word. So statins, um, you can see the three right there. Uh, on the other side, unfortunately, this doesn't end in a nice little ending that we can help remember. So in this one, we'll just have to remember these two medications, phenofibrate and gemfibrozil. Those two you can just remember as the fibrates. The brand names are Tricor and Lopid. So just remember those two. Again, no fancy ending here to help us remember these. Let's discuss pain relievers. Now, in the pain relievers, you've actually probably had many of this first category called an NSAID. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Now, let's think about steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Maybe you've had a steroid such as prednisone before. That's an anti-inflammatory drug, and it comes with its own set of side effects. But non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, it's called that just because we're trying to note that it's not a steroid. Um, these are actually a little worse on the kidney at times. Nonetheless, um, they're kind of the lifeblood of pain management. Um, so I've got three examples here, ibuprofen, diclofenac, and naproxen. Check out the brand names, Motrin and Advil for ibuprofen, Voltaren for diclofenac, and uh, anaprox and naproxen for naproxen. You'll see naproxen over-the-counter, also called Aleve. Aleve. So those are your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Over on the right side here, I have opiates, or you'll hear them uh, called opioids sometimes. But these are usually going to be a control drug, a controlled substance. Again, we'll get into more into that into our law section, but they do have a little bit more addictive potential and abuse potential. I have hydrocodone, oxycodone and hydromorphone. You can probably hear that codone ending and kind of see something here that, it, oh, okay, that's probably an opiate. Um, so codone it usually means it's a derivative of, of codeine. Um, usually that all comes from a, a plant, um, you know, the, the opium plant. So that, yeah, opiates, that's why it's come from that. So these are addictive. Again, much like the benzodiazepines in the first slide, watch out for all that goes with an addictive medication because it is uh, quite troublesome sometimes to you as a technician. Antidepressants. Uh, I bring up antidepressants here because it's good to know them. They're very heavily prescribed and because of that you'll need to know what is an antidepressant. Um, unfortunately I don't have a nice ending here to denote to you that oh that's always an antidepressant. So let's just go over this list that I have here. I have paroxetine, fluoxetine, venlafaxine, bupropion, 
sertraline, citalopram, and escitalopram. Now you can see the brand names there and also you might have noticed that many of them end in I-N-E. That doesn't always mean that is an antidepressant, so don't, don't think you found something there. There's also another one that we'll discuss here in just a second that's an acid reducer that ends in a similar fashion that is not an antidepressant. So the brand names here, Paxil, Prozac, Effexor, Wellbutrin, Zoloft, Celexa, and Lexapro. You'll want to know those, each of them matching to those. You know, one thing I want to say here is the great thing about a video course with a pharmacy class is you get to hear the pronunciations of a drug. It is real easy to read the drug and then be able to pronounce it wrong and you just really, through the repetition, get to almost think that is correct. Maybe a year later you realize it's not correct and then all of a sudden you, sound, you realize you've sounded foolish. So this is a good chance to be able to learn how to pronounce these drugs too. Let's talk about acid reducers. Acid reducers. I've got two different categories here. I have PPIs on the left, proton pump inhibitors, and H2RA, a, uh, histamine 2 receptor antagonists on the right. So we'll start with the PPIs. Those end in A-Z-O-L-E, azole. Um, there are a, there's one drug I can think of right now that actually is an exception to that rule. So you still kind of want to learn the drug as a whole. But uh, um, nonetheless, these three drugs that you're going to see are the ones you're going to see most often. Um, so the omeprazole, lansoprazole, and pantoprazole, brand names of Prilosec, Prevacid, and Protonix. Um, so again, don't call it omeprazole, it's omeprazole. On to the right side here, the H2RAs, these end in D-I-N-E, so ranitidine, cimetidine, and famotidine. Um, the brand names are Zantac, Tagamet, and Pepsid. There are other H2RAs out there, but I've just wanted you to focus on these right here. Check out the supplementary material for a little bit more exhaustive list of uh, these medications that might be in the top 200. And that is it for the second lecture of drug nomenclature. We'll move on to the third section where we can kind of learn a little bit more about these medications and you can know your top 200 a little bit better.